So we get asked regularly, why would I build a house out of concrete? And that's a great question. And to kind of help that answer is I ask the question, why are we still building houses out of wood? You know, 200 years ago, we built bridges out of wood, but we, you know, we don't build bridges out of wood today. Uh, 200 years ago, we built boats out of wood. Uh, actually, even further back than 200 years. And you know, today we're building them out of other materials than wood. Uh, wooden boats are still around today, but they have an awful lot of maintenance required for them. Airplanes. Airplanes started out even 100 years ago as, as wood, uh, light, lightweight material. But now we have stronger, better materials than wood. I, I would not fly in a wooden airplane today. And even back as cars, horse and buggies. You know, they started out as wood. I'm not riding in a, in a wooden car on the interstate. Uh, that's not very safe. And so there are far better ways to build homes today uh, than wood. And we feel like insulating concrete forms are, are the best way to build a house. Is kind of conceptually, we can see that they're very high wind resistance. And this is a wonderful image of a house in Florida that was direct hit uh, by, I believe, Hurricane Michael. Uh, but you can see just about all the homes around it are gone. And I find it fascinating, the one house that looks in relatively good shape, uh, besides the concrete one along the shoreline, is, the, uh, is, is right behind it, which actually blocked everything. Uh, so we definitely have very high wind capacities uh, with an ICF house. Another natural disaster event uh, is a storm surge and a hurricane. And uh, this image is of a home, I believe in Mississippi from the uh, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, I think I read that this was a 22 foot storm surge that came through and hit, hit this neighborhood. And you can see virtually everything's gone. Um, just slabs left and you can see where this ICF home was still standing. Uh, looks like the shingles took some damage. Uh, windows and doors, I think, have uh, been damaged, but uh, the structure itself is still intact and uh, really uh, very survivable structure. And so we also see that uh, ICFs are very fire resistant. And here you can see a neighborhood in California that uh, took a direct hit from a wildfire. Uh, we have three homes left that look to be in very good shape and were not uh, damaged by the wildfires. And so again, ICF homes are very fire resistant. What are ICF walls? Uh, they are insulated concrete forms. Typically, you they are about uh, almost a foot thick. You've got roughly um, an inside and outside two and a half inches of styrofoam and where we pump concrete into the middle of them. Uh, and so then once the concrete is poured in, uh, it forms and becomes very, very strong. And that adds the structural rigidity to the home. And then it's encapsulated with styrofoam. And that is our insulation. Uh, this gives us complete thermal isolation from exterior temperature. So when it's 10 degrees outside, uh, you do not have any thermal conduction going through the walls directly from outside to inside which is a, is a great uh, system for insulating your home. So ICFs are also very uh, energy efficient in that they're passive geothermal homes. So if you can imagine the footers uh, in the ground that are, you know, at least four or five feet in the ground, very large mass of concrete, the ICF wall is sitting directly on top of the concrete footer. The two concrete core of the ICF and the top of the footer are in direct contact with each other, which is good thermal conductivity. The above grade or in grade ICF wall is encapsulated with styrofoam. So that leads basically a, a heat transfer of energy from the earth steady temperature up the ICF wall through the foundation, first floor and second floor walls, depending on how tall or how many levels the house has. So. Uh, the exterior perimeter of an ICF house is pretty much following the earth ground temperatures on the, um, as it surrounds the house and it just becomes a, a passive self-heating and cooling home. And here we have some actual temperature readings of an ICF 
house um, performing without the use of the heat pump running. Uh, the image on the left is of an ICF house that had been in the winter time and been without heating and cooling for over five days and it stayed below freezing that entire time. And the ICF house went from uh, inside temperature of 70 degrees before the power went out. After the power went out, it dropped to 60 degrees after 24 hours and then plateaued or stayed at 60 for the next four days. Um, the, our neighbors were actually in wooden homes, were in the low 40s, upper 30s, and actually had to leave their house. So that, that was a great example of a cold event where power was lost and the, the geothermal passive geothermal principles were actually heating the house at that point. Uh, the upper image is uh, the reverse in the summertime. This was an ICF house in construction. We actually had power uh, for the house summertime, but we had not turned the unit on because we were still kind of dusty situation. We didn't want to bring dust into the system. And so outside temperatures were low 90s uh, for the week and the inside of this ICF was maintaining 75 degrees without the AC. So again, very survivable, very comfortable. We just need enough energy typically to go from 60 to 70 in the wintertime or, you know, it could get upwards of 80, I guess, in a long extended period of time in the summer. Um, but uh, back down to 70. So it definitely is a um, passive geothermal system.